go. No one told me this game was happening, so here I am to watch this game and stream it. I don't really know these players, so uh, I can't give any cool insights on them, but I can give cool insights on the characters. Welcome to the Mentor event, which is the best of two, I think, should still be. Uh, league event that uh, sees a bunch of new players playing each other with the advice of, you know, cool, not new players. Yeah, that one. I turned down the music so that people can hear me. I was supposed to get an audio splitter. I was actually looking for an audio splitter. And then right before I downloaded the plugin for OBS to do the audio splitter, uh, this happened. So here we are. We're seeing Ragna versus Lychee. Very good season five characters, probably in the top ten of all characters in the game. Considering there's 99 characters, that's a lot of uh, flag ground to cover. Ragna is do with a sword. What you don't know is that his arm is replaced by a magic book, and so it allows him to access blood stealing powers or something like that. I know nothing about Blaze Blue Lore, so I'm just working with what I got. His abilities include healing every time he hits you in the face, and then uh, exceeding to heal more and hit you in the face some more. He also has a very, very reliable kit that allows him to get in at a decent amount of ranges and shove the opponent into the corner to keep beating on them. Lychee, on the other hand, she's a cool person, I guess. I think she's a scientist. And, and her best friend was turned into a horrible alien bug monster. So her goal is to try to get her friend back to some semblance of living. And not just being an amalgamation of screaming bugs. Her special ability includes having a stick. The stick gives her range, but damages her speed. But she can throw her stick into the battlefield to do different attacks from. Her boost and attack kit all interact with her staff, allow her to get positioning advantage, as well as just actual advantage. The hit effect, if the opponent standing on the staff gains power and advantage, allowing her to basically get three points of value every single time she strikes with the stick near her opponent. Ragna going ham here. Two advantage attacks makes Ragma a very happy guy. We're gonna take a prepare action at a time when the prepare action is probably the correct move. Lychee using up a sweep and a block means that Ragna's better cards, which are his, uh, Mid speeds are a lot less useful. Tenbo toss onto the arena as a free action. Like she now striking. I'm gonna guess with her cool range one ignore armor attack that zips her across the arena. Let's find out. Hey, go figure. Ragna blocking was uh, definitely the wrong call in a situation like this. Sadly, this was a fairly predictable attack. Ragna not realizing that this ignores armor, meaning that the block will be stunned out.
as it was, this was a uh, super safe move for Lychee to do, and it was pretty much slamming on the table as soon as she saw it. So, Agnes' range 4 follow-ups are a bit limited, given that he's already used up a Hell's Fang. He has another Hell's Fang, it'd be great to throw it right now. Yeah, the other big option is Dead Spike. Also, preferably, uh, spending a cross to get in would be pretty good. Unfortunately, the resource situation at the moment makes it difficult for Ragna to actually spend force to close in. Moving to range 2. Uh, technically, Ragna has a decent range 2, but this does allow Lychee to basically freely move the Matenbo to threaten her disjoint attacks, if she wants to. Fortunately, every point of movement that you don't use up using run on cross or backstep on assault is wasted value. Now, in a lot of cases, characters don't have good ranged options, so sometimes retreating four, not great. But basically, every character is a good range one option. Uh, and Given the matchup, Lychee is a very powerful zoning character, which means that you really don't want to be any further than range 1 from her. So we're going to count that as two misplays on Ragnar's part. We'll see if that starts to become insurmountable anytime soon. Magna, thankfully, is extremely stable as long as he keeps hitting. So, being at this range, Magna's options include throwing Inferno Divider, which is very solid 5 damage attack. He doesn't really have the resources to support doing that. You play boost. He has a lot of reasonable boosts, increases defensive power, and a few of them even draw him cards. You can play Blood Scythe. Or you can prepare. If I didn't have Blood Scythe in hand, I probably would have played that. Or like any of his fairly unreasonable boosts. Pressing to focus. Right now, adding focus to gauge. Not really sure how he's pulling that one off. Ichi in a very solid spot. Now, both players have fairly similar resources, but Lychee having 4 gauge means that she has access to all of her ultras. Given the, uh, the range disadvantage that Ragnar currently has, he's going to have to spend resources to get in. Uh, or, you know, slam Carter Scissors on the board to uh, get him. Unfortunately, Carter Scissors loses really, really hard to a uh, very specific disjoint attack from Lychee. Unfortunately, I don't think the risk of playing Carter Scissors is worth it. If I recall correctly, Carter Scissors has Azure Grimoire. Oh no. It's not over yet. Never mind, Carter Scissors is completely useless in this situation unless, like, makes a hard call up. Like Soul Eater to close one makes sense. Uh, Ragna has 
four different card options you can play from this range. Diving in would be fairly solid. Playing Dead Spike is always a good choice. Uh, less useful option he has at the moment, given that the opponent's already used up a block, is... I don't remember the name. Hellsmith? No. Gauntlet Hades, yeah. Very good attack the opponent's corner. Uh, kind of weird if they aren't, since uh, it has Advance 1 or 2 printed on it. And if you advance past the opponent with it, it's not a great day. Uh, seeing the parry for Hellsfang. We do have Dive and Gauntlet Hades available. So, potential reading from Lychee coming up. The correct choice at this point is hard to say. I think if I were Ragna, I would just strike. Strike with the dive, get it out of hand. Probably get my spike red. But the dive is worth currently 8 points of value. Gain 2 life from hit effect on Soul Eater and gain 1 life from the effect on Ragna. Plus, pretty viable 5 power printed on it. I'm gonna lower the bitrate a bit on my stream since it seems to have a little bit of problems here. I want to make sure that anyone can watch it, as opposed to just me. And understands a bit right, so I'm just gonna drop it to a thousand. Hope it still looks good. Uh, Ragna still deciding on what to do. Uh, striking like I was hoping. Um, as noted, dive, really good choice here. Fairly certain my chief does not have options against dive at this range. Um, no. Here's the dive. Um, revealing before the opponent does is a little bit of a uh, opa. Reasonable trade and probably the best of light you could have hoped for on this one. Lychee doesn't have a whole lot of ways to punish that hand. Uh, if she has reading, she can call Assault. But what does she do at that point? Does she Wild Swing? If 
If I give him the Tenbow as a free action, she may just be able to uh, read the Assault and then throw a Wild Swing and pray that she draws something that hits it. Which, uh, what does that even include? Renchon. It's just literally Renchon and her own assault. Dive. Uh, Lychee exceeding. I don't believe that she is in an advantage position to do this. Tenbo is currently in a weird spot. She is currently in a weird spot. She only has three cards in hand. This kills her ability to use ultras. She only has five cards worth of resources at the moment to work with. And teleporting Matembo to the opponent's base and then striking uh, basically only means that you're doing one extremely specific attack. Uh, Ragna can fairly safely just wait this out, in my opinion. Um, except for the fact that he's already used both blocks. Means that he would need to have some sort of option against Four Wind. Waiting to see what Ragna does. Ragna probably needs to get his uh, his normals out of hand ASAP. Instead, he is playing Fierce. The opponent draws... I want to say their second focus. Uh, I'm just going to run into some problems. Overdrive, placing the Tembo. Next to the opponent. Curious. Preparing! Even more curious. This leads me to believe that there was no plan for the overdrive. Very common for players to look at their seed mode, press the button, and then realize, oh no, I have no options. What this usually indicates is that the player hasn't learned the finer fundamentals of using the change cards action. Lychee had 5 gauge, and I believe 2 cards in hand. A 5 gauge could have been spent to refill that hand. If the hand itself wasn't good, then those cards could have been spent. I'm not doing the slowest possible removal of cards in this hand. Lichy's overdrive effect kicks in, and at this point, I feel like the correct option would be to teleport to the Matembo. Instead, Matembo is moved onto Ragnar. This doesn't threaten anything new. This feels like an obvious uh, four wins. Sorry, I have to check these all the time because I don't remember 
which uh, which Mahjong terms I'm working with. I guess it makes sense that Aldri and 13 Orphans would be Ultras, considering that they are an absurd amount of points. At that four wins isn't an absurd amount of points. Fairly certain it's equivalent to all green and 13 orphans. Maybe that's why it's a four special. And that's why robbing the con is also a four special. Because uh, robbing the con is a very rare thing that happens in Mahjong play. So when it does happen, you end up getting a bonus on top of whatever win condition you fulfilled. Because Mahjong is a weird game where every win condition is worth a different amount of points. Ragna attempting to decide what to do here. Unfortunately, if Four Winds is played, Ragna doesn't really have options. Um, the funny option would be to play Carter Scissors. Because Carter Scissors basically just works here. It's unlikely that like, she's going to dive in with this sort of board position. Could happen, but... If you play the cheeky carnage scissors, you blow two gauge, and uh, if she didn't dive, then you pretty much cleanly win the strike. And that's uh, six power, I believe? Five power, so that's a seven power attack that is incoming. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm pretty sure Four Winds only has three powers, so there's no way that it's breaking through Defend. So yeah, I believe correct play here is Carnage Scissors into the incoming Four Winds. Let's see if it happens. Oh, dead spike. Unfortunate. Dead spike is like the bait option. Um, on the upside, it has an after close too, so at least Ragna can establish a better range next turn. Next strike, hopefully. The. The truly unfortunate thing here is uh, Lychee getting another turn to work with. Dead Spike was just a misplay, unless there was literally no other option. Even Dive would have been better play than Dead Spike, in my opinion. Uh, wait. Is Matembo not being used? I don't know how I feel about this one. Matembo not being used. There's virtually no benefit to not consuming it. Uh... Alright, so, good news. It's Ragnar's turn. You can turn it around. Bad news. All green. Uh, if Lychee just swings all green at this range, Ragna effectively loses the game. There's no way he's making back the hate life. So 
what does Ragna do? He has a Silt in hand still. Uh, if he attacks with it, he probably loses the game. Taking the Season 1 action. The very classic, spend a card from hand to move one so that I get out of my opponent's favored range. Things like Season 1 favored ranges is why characters having boosts that allow them to effectively spend less to do more, or to spend more to take extra actions, is extremely important or exceeds overall health. Move and Strike is very powerful. Move and cover multiple spaces for a single card is very powerful. For instance, Cross right here, doing its work. This allows Lychee to continue zoning out Ragna for as long as she can possibly manage it. Now, both her ultras are online, so Ragna is currently in the death zone. And due to the way that Card Scissors works, cannot dodge if she plays any of her attacks that originate from a Tenbo, as they become range 1 attacks instead of range 5 attacks from this position. Arachna player carefully assessing the situation with 4 cards in hand. I am fairly certain he has Black Grimoire in hand. Revolver action is not the play from this position. Spending one to draw three is fine in a lot of positions, but currently Ragna, as I've mentioned, is in the death zone. All Lychee needs to do is draw one of her ultras, and the game is virtually over. Only sweeps about to ask about card scissors, I know that much. I was hoping to answer that question before the question even got asked. Ragna in a god awful board state. Lechi deciding what to do with her three remaining cards. Playing the Ultra, as expected. This ain't a block. Ain't getting validated either. Cross is the only way to evade this, as far as I'm aware. Focus ain't gonna do it. That's an easy 4 damage.
I cheat with only two cards in hand. If Ragna just throws hard scissors out right now and then mashes out attacks, he might be able to win the game. I'm gonna admit full of cards. Seven remaining in deck. He has to have card scissors by now. There it is. Why? Unfortunately, doing that is not going to apply enough pressure to the Elaichi. Elaichi throwing... Are you gonna say Spike? I don't think I've seen Spikes from her yet. Salt's pretty good. Salt's... Ragnar just loses the game on this one. Ragnar advances into the corner, whips. Now all Light she needs to do is just throw a sweep or focus, and game's done. Well, Hades was not the correct play for Spike either. Didn't really beat much of anything from that position. Slamming down, not over yet. For whatever reason, it gets discarded. I actually made this mistake in a tournament game once. I did not remember to keep Not Over yet in play, and I hit my opponent for less damage than I should have. I still won the game! This is a very dangerous spike to be throwing. I don't think this beats any of her options, and it definitely does not. would have mattered.
Unfortunately, the Ragnar misplays really killed that. Unfortunately, reading comprehension error on uh, an exceed card kicks in once again. Uh, a lot of good exceed cards have very little text on them, so they're very obvious what they do. Um, cards like this, especially with the formatting on this, Jesus. Um, yeah, cards like this that have a lot of text are very difficult to read for a lot of players. Um, regardless of how experienced they are. It means that you need to double check and triple check whatever the heck it says to make sure that you know what's happening. Uh, Reach is either a 166 attack, which is fantastic, or it's a teleport move that hits at 6 speed. Uh, both of which are pretty fantastic, honestly. It is the reason it costs a horse. Uh, chun -Li versus Hilda is going to be volatile. Um, if either player misplays, the game's probably over. chun -Li has reasonable options against Hilda's normal nonsense, which I believe puts her in an advantage position, on top of just being like a top 10 character. So, Chun Li's big thing is that she plays Third Strike. Her, her big goal is play attacks that build gauge, hit your opponent with Giant Ultra that kills them. She has probably one of the most unfair exceed modes that gives her range and the ability to retreat every time she plays a boost. And her boosts pretty much all add themselves to Gage, which means that she can accelerate very quickly. Hilda, on the other hand, has basically a non-existent ability. She can increase her normal range at the cost of reducing power, which would be fine if it didn't increase the minimum range on the normals, which is written in such an awkward way that it's hard to actually read what's happening with this range band. Uh, her exceed mode also is, in my opinion, one of the poorly designed exceed modes of Season 6. Season 6 exceed modes are really cool when they give you a huge chunky bonus in exchange for gauge. Hilda's basically just gives her cards. She can trade her gauge for worse, which any character can do. She can do it slightly better than other characters. She can like mash together move actions plus change cards. And I guess that's okay. It's not terrific. <sighs> Chun Li opening with a strike. Uh, correct option is probably spinning bird kick. It's not a very good option, but it's an option nonetheless. Uh, preparing would have probably been a good action. Turn one into Hilda. Setting up a boost would have been fine. Hilda's well, main danger is Skewer, which is a 2 damage 6 speed attack, which I believe doesn't stun and hits it pretty much the full board. When it's relevant, it hits like the full board. It might actually be a 1 to 8 attack, I don't remember. It is. Skewer's a reasonable attack. Honestly, the most reasonable part of Skewer is the fact that it doesn't stun, which means that you have to make the decision between moving the opponent with its hit effect or drawing a card. Uh, 
So obviously you just pick whatever makes you lose the least. And dive into... Oh. I misread who's playing what. Hold the diving! That's a good way to uh, get the Kikoken out of hand. Kikoken being uh, one of Chen Li's major win cards. Not for the attack, but for the boost. Boost allows her to threaten end game positions where she can just throw, I believe, nine power that's virtually uninterruptible. Uh, I mean, the Salina is fantastic too. Henley retreating to range two and throwing out fears. That is fairly sensible. Uh, her range two follow ups, I think, mostly are head stomp. I think it's just head stun because Hacker uh has a critical trigger which affects your boost in play. Since Chen Li doesn't have the gauge, it's kind of a moot card. Unless, I mean, a 1 5 6 is fine. Or 1 to 2 5 6, rather. It's not terrible. I wouldn't play it on purpose. Akaretsu Ken is not a very good card to begin with. Also, sorry for all the Japanese viewers out there. I keep saying Ken as if she she punches you with her fist. Uh, I mean to say Kakuretsu Kyaku. Uh, range to grass from Hilda seems suspicious. I'm not sure what Hilda's best play is from this position. Um, Spike loses to basically everything relevant. Uh, it's the Grasp. Emily with no cards in hand to beat the Grasp and gets stunned. Emily takes two damage and probably gets shoved into the corner. She's gonna get pulled to the other side of Hilda. That might also be an advantageous position. You wouldn't think so, being that Hilda's a zoner. But she does have Interference, which is one of the rudest attacks ever created. Now the unfortunate thing here is that Interference is less useful now, because Chen Li has both Spinning Bird Kick and Head Stomp, which allows her to cross over Hilda back into the corner. Playing Parry... Opponent must discard a card. Aiming cross. Oh my, that's a hand. Fancy Loom being Hilda's teleport. Uh, two sweeps, just, you know, being 12 damage. Only retreating off of the resolution effect of the boost.
Now, notably, she gets to retreat after seeing her opponent's hand from block. Um, she plays Reading. Reading says name a card and strike, which means that Reading is resolved as soon as the strike action is declared. Uh, which means that she does have to retreat before setting her cards. And before knowing if the opponent has the card that she has named. You can't do broken reading strategies. Uh, preparing. I don't remember the boost on Condensity Boom. I'm going to be honest. I don't remember many of the boosts. Uh, ah, fade away. Uh, with that hand, that's... Uh, I'll do the risk. Power attack getting played. Uh, power attack is super valuable. Um, it's so good that Hilda has four of them. You don't want to let your opponent have turn after they play power attack. Uh, knowing this, you can bet your opponent into making moves that you can punish. But uh, as it is, power attack is worth plus one power and a gauge, which uh, on my evaluation charts is, let's just say, three points of value. Um, the advantage adds an additional two points, which makes this a five point card if you strike with it. Any time that you can deny your opponent value, uh, you should probably take it. Well, they're deciding what to do. Two sweeps and a condensed big wound gives her options. Uh, she has a reasonable threat. Throwing light probably is the correct move. Um, it's dependent on what she drew off to prepare. There's a dive in there. Probably isn't, given that she has a 32 card deck and she's already played one. There's a dive in there, playing white's probably fine because that allows her to create an old strike at speed six. Um, playing cross right now would be great. Speaking of which. Uh, Light and the Spike is also, like, a option. Oh, I don't know where that CPU load came from. Uh, EX Spinning Bird Kick into Skewer. Skewer was a not good move. Oh, hold up! Spinning Bird Kick doesn't hit! Never mind, Skewer was a Galaxy Brain move. Spinning Bird Kick is a funky attack that does not hit at range 1. Uh, well, range 1 if it's played. Range 1 if it's played, and the opponent's not in the corner. Playing a midboard like this uh, means that it whips. Chunli losing a ton of value.
word of warning, after that CPU spike I just had, my voice is going to come in a little bit delayed. I'm currently hearing myself in my ears like a second after I speak. Maybe a little bit more than that. Well, the striking, I assume calling... Plus one range, let's see here. No, just regular. This would be a good position to cross. Um, I don't think she has particularly good range three options. Sweep might be fine. Sweep is really fine. Spike was the other main range three choice. Uh, considering she has two sweeps, slamming one on the table makes sense. Actually makes that focus a really poor play by Chun Li. Uh, I believe that was from hand too. Uh, advancing three and then retreating one. Erica inevitably being confused about how the heck spaces work. But, as it turns out, it's not the spaces that matters. It's Chun-Li. Range 3 light. Uh, knowing the opponent has sweep in their hand makes this a lot more valuable. Uh, unfortunately, Hilda has Condensity Blue. Uh, playing that to Backdash and then Mashing Skewer seems like the correct move. See what happens. Uh, even if she doesn't have Skewer in hand, Backdashing and then Mashing a Wild Swing probably works. Outside of spinning bird kick, Koken is Chen Li's only other range 5 card. See, I'm really hoping I see the uh, density green play here. Boost on it isn't always useful, but when it is useful, it's super useful. Uh, ooh, the other choice, moving to the range where speed doesn't matter. This incentivizes Chun Li to strike. Okay, throwing out the other ignore armor. Sweep being the correct play here. Uh, worst case scenario, Chen Li throws Spike and Swipe is dead. Swipe, sweep. Uh, but otherwise, there wasn't much else that he'll do. Uh, this. Pretty much... Ooh, there's the spike, actually. Pretty much puts Hilda in a winning position. Now, this is Chun-Li, so anything could happen. Uh, Chun-Li with only three cards on the field is not a great position to be in, though. It means that she can't really use change cards effectively. And she doesn't really have much she can do for base. Cross and spike. Uh, 
This puts Hilda at a very scary range. Uh, her big, big projectile is now available. Uh, Revenant Pillar is kind of nonsense. Uh, the biggest value that you can get out of Revenant Pillar is advantage and discard at random. Yeah, the other options on there are fine, but they're not like, they're not as good as those. Uh, Hilda, fine. Hilda, you have seven gauge. You don't need seven gauge. Oh no, wait. She exceeded. She's gonna set up something unstoppable. That makes sense. Oh, she didn't even take the exceed action. She took the boost action. Yeah, this makes a lot of sense. Exceeding! It's hard to say. Gently can win from this position. She definitely can. It's not going to be a fun ride. That said, Hilda is in such a good position right now that this probably makes sense. At this point, she can follow up with either Ultra. Hailment will do 6 damage at range 4 or 3, since uh, she can use her front side ability to increase the range of Sweep to range 4. Because she can spend Sweep, Sweep, and Skewer. Uh, range 4 also means in the darkness can get played. It's not a great attack, but it is an attack that gains advantage. Alright, so with that, I believe the games are over. Uh, that will be a tie game for the players. I think the uh, the Hilda play was a lot better than the Ragnar play, which is kind of funny to me because I believe the Hilda requires a lot more execution to get value. Ragnar requires a lot less execution, but mistakes can still happen. Yeah, overall evaluation. Ragnar game had a lot of mistakes from Ragnar. This game... I'm not really sure what happened. Henley may have made mistakes. May not have been noticing that. Hey, check the discard file. Sweep instead of Spike. Spike probably should have been played. SBK honestly felt safe. I can understand playing SBK with power attack. Yeah, I don't know what happened here. Uh, I think it may have just been mix-ups. I think chun -Li just lost a bunch of mix-ups. I don't think either player really made mistakes. Which uh, is good! Mistakes are how you lose exceed. And when there's zero mistakes in a game, it basically comes down to uh, power level of characters and the ability to do mix-ups. Uh, in this case, I think Chun-Li's power level is way better than Hilda's. But uh, Chun-Li lost, I think, every mix-up that mattered. She 
she even lost the mix-ups that didn't matter. Oh, well, it happens. The seed can be a volleyball game. But, uh, I think overall, second game really good. First game, a lot to review and learn. Well, I think that's it for us today. Another game happens, I'll probably make an attempt to stream again while recording it. Uh, hope to see everyone later.